Hey guys, in today's conversation series, we have uh, a very inspiring personality, uh, Mr. Srinath Rajam, a successful businessman. Not just that, uh, I would call him an athlete as well. You know, he's he's 65, uh, but the energy levels what he's got uh, is is as much as a uh, he wouldn't accept that. Like, but 25, <laughs> 25, right? And lots to learn. And uh, this is a very interesting conversation. Srinath Rajam is is what uh, you know you know we we discussed before this conversation i mean before we started this conversation there are so many faces to what you do sir you are a successful businessman uh, you are a, you are an amazing father is what i heard uh, a very kind person most importantly uh, there is this stereotype uh, where people say successful people cannot be kind and uh, you know i i'm going to talk about that uh, more and you're a very fit guy. And you said uh, at the age of 65, you're the fittest ever in your life. 36. <laughs> Who told you I'm 60? <laughs> <laughs> right. So you feel, okay, I'm going to ask about that. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, how important is fitness and how, that, how has that contributed to what you are today, sir? Be it your professional life and your personal life. Fitness aspect of fitness it. Aspect. See, I went to, went to boarding school when I was about 10 years old. Boarding school is tough life, right? You have to be fit, you have to walk, etc. So I never really was out of shape. But the good thing there was that we had a New Zealand coach uh, who was trained in the Arthur Lydia School of Base, you know, the base, right? Zone 2 and base and aerobic fitness. So I got stuck into that. So for he was there for about a year or two, but that really set the foundation. So I became a long distance, you know, I loved, I loved the you know, pounding, you know, mile after mile after mile. So that, uh, that set the base. I never got out of shape, never. You never got out of shape ever in your life? All, all my life, I never got out of shape. Even right now, a typical week for me would be 12 to 15 hours a week, okay? A mix of cardio would be about 10, 10 hours, strength training twice a week. And when I say strength training, it's compound movements, Olympic movements, and uh, twice a week at least heavy and yoga 30 minutes three four days a week so 13 hours 15 hours is very typical week for me you're 65 years old yeah okay okay since you say <laughs> that again i if you insist okay no because i'm going to follow that up with a question don't i look nervous are you sure I, no no you, you're fine i don't look nervous no okay that's fine go ahead so like see i see a lot of patients uh, uh who above the age of 50 uh you know they they for example, forget fitness activities. They're not even comfortable doing their forget daily activities. Forget 50, activity. 35, they go downhill. 30, <laughs> exactly. they go downhill. Okay. So, how do you keep yourself uh, not just physically fit? When I see you, you you are a very happy person, and you have a, you have an amazing personality. Uh, that doesn't come, you know, uh, just like that. I'm sure years of hard work has gone into that, building yourself as a human being. So, how do you how do you do that, or what have you done all these years to be well, this way? Let me just uh, go off the mark a little bit. My latest passion is bridge. So last year in February, we said we want to become amongst the top teams in India in five years. Bridge takes a long time, yeah. right? It's a you know tough game. Just recently in the World Championships, um, India seniors team got a silver, which is an awesome achievement. Okay, India has always done well in bridge. So we said, okay. So last February, we said, IPL style team, we formed a team. We said, okay, we want to become the best in India or the top teams in India in about five years. So that's a passion of mine today. So that's engaged mentally besides at work. So that's one thing. Okay, now you were asking me, how do I keep fit, right? It's internal, internal motivation, right? How about you? What makes you work out? What makes you work out five days a week, six days a week? What makes you eat clean? Same thing, you know, we're all the same, right? We just, we just, it's, it's a habit. We, we cannot look at ourselves and, you know, have a, you know, you know, see ourselves with a 40 inch waistline. But more than that, you feel good and you can enjoy a quality of life. At, at my age today, I can play golf, I can bike, I can walk, I can trek, I can do things which 35 year olds, 30 year olds, can do so the quality of life is great oh that's amazing uh, you beautifully put that across you can do whatever you want absolutely i i i have i can do whatever i was doing at 25 or 30 i can do it now it's oh, just wow. that i'm a little slower 
but otherwise not an issue at all. Right. Uh, Work-life balance, you know, this is a common question which uh, <coughs> a lot of people uh, struggle to, to figure out with and few words on that, sir, about work-life balance. The biggest mistake I say I made in my younger days was being obsessed with work. Okay? Work for the sake of work. And I think that's the biggest mistake everybody makes. So you've got to take time off and not just work-life balance over a month or a week. Work-life balance over a day. I think you've got to get that right. You must be able to turn off. You must turn off your phone. You must turn off your email. Not be answering your emails at 9 o'clock at night. One more comes back 9.30. You are you know, at it. It ruins your family life, your personal life. So I would say one of the biggest mistakes I've made is not to get into the work-life balance at a younger age. Wow. So that's... So how, how, I would, okay. Uh, sorry to... Yeah. So what would your... What would be your advice to uh, younger people uh, these days? See, let's be clear about it. 90% of the success in life is having enough money to do what you want. Let's be very clear. It may be 95%. No marriage, nobody can be happy. <laughs> if you don't have enough cash to do what you want. I'm not talking of greed here. Let's be clear. I'm talking of needs. Right? You want to buy the shirt you like or the basic needs and a little bit more, that's got to happen. So money has got to be the number one for a younger person, right? 25 to 45 at least. So that has to be done. However, even within that, there is a time where you need to take off. You must take off because nothing will happen. Wow. This that's, <laughs> that's a key part. If you shut your cell phone off at 6 six. 6 p.m. or 7 p.m., you put a time and nothing going to happen. People will respect you for that. Right? It's, you are not a slave to somebody sitting in the U.S. You say, hey, 7 o'clock, I'm done. I'll do anything you want to the next day. So you've got to, get, you've got to respect yourself. That's the root cause of the problem. Not be a slave to an email at 9.30, 10, 11 o'clock, your phone is on. So you've got to get out of that. You beautifully said that. Nothing is going to happen, right? Like nothing, nothing will happen. Nothing in, in two hours at night, nothing is <laughs> going to happen. You can always take care of it the next day. The people always feel left out. Yeah, uh, nothing going to happen. They will, they will actually respect you more and you will get the same things done. And you will have time to, re to rest, recharge, take care of your spouse, your family, whatever it takes. Because you got to spend time with your kids. Absolutely. And how important is it to be kind or a big-hearted human being? Uh, in context of <coughs> See, the kindness, it is a tedious trait. L I mean, let's be clear. It is something that we are taught at a very young age. Be humble, be respectful, be fair and just. Right? This is something which you learn from my father. Everybody in the family is like that. So, it's, it's, it's just not, it's more about being a good person. Because if you're a good person, you can be a good spouse, you can be a good friend, you can be a good, good leader at work. So you need to be consistent in all spheres. Amazing. Be a good person first. That's the first step, right? Ah, and to be a good, good person, you have to be fair, you have to be just, you have to be humble. For example, when I go to my plants, the, the, I mean, without any disrespect, there are people who clean our, our toilets. I have lunch with them. They sit on the same table as me and I have lunch with them. And so far, like, uh, you've, you would have seen a lot of things in life, like, be it your personal life, professional life. Family, family disputes, life. Dispute. I've seen a lot. You would have yes. seen, you know, the kind of magnitude of things you handle uh, in context with business also is like pretty, pretty big. Three simple life lessons, what you've learned so far. Well, I just said the first one, right? Be fair and just at all, all times. I think. That's, I mean, that's uh, one. Second part is, I would say from myself, be independent. Never depend on anybody for anything. I said, you must be independent. Because working in a group is something which is, you must be independent first. You must make your own. It, it does not matter if your grandfather planted trees that are 5,000 feet tall. It's what you have done that matters. So you need to be independent. You need to add value to yourself. So this would be number two. And the third one is, I would say, from a parent, I would say, love equals time. 
right? You can't say I love my kids a lot and you're, you know, 40 days a year out on the, you know, I mean, I mean, uh, 40 days a month on tour, you can't do that. If you love your kids, you have to spend time with them. You have to be a role model to them. You can't smoke and tell them not to smoke. But love equals time. So I think that's also a very key part. There, there are many more, but I, I would say these, uh, you know, off the top. Right. Kids, coming back to kids. How important or rather I will just ask you in a very simple way. Parenting skills, three uh, things which worked for you and which didn't work for you as well. What would people, what should people learn from you as a father? Um, one is they pay attention to what you do, not what you say. So it's extremely critical. So you must be very, very clear. For example, I said, you, you, you can't be overweight and then tell your kids, hey, eat clean. It's not going to work. Second, I think you must look after your spouse. You must visibly take care of your spouse. Oh, that's very important. Wow. Because they see that. They, when I say they take care of your spouse, not in terms of cash and money. You got to shower affection on her and they, and they should see it. You got to respect her. They should see that. Because then they will hopefully treat their spouse the same way. So treating their mother is critical. Treating their, their mom well is critical. I would say this is number two. And the third one is you got to be fair to all. Accept all of them. They are different. They cannot be the same and be, be fair to all of them. Give them the same opportunities. Be very fair to all of them. Don't compare. I would say these are the three things which I have tried to do. I'm not perfect. Let's be very clear. Nobody is, but I've tried to do these things. Three life lessons as a, as a businessman. As a businessman, number one is, uh, I would say, cash every day has to be there cash every day for the business not personal for the business the second one is do not chase wealth wow do not chase wealth chase employment chase that is if you generate employment and in fact that's a skill i have that's a skill that we all have right we have the ability to create and manage <clears throat> companies. The TVS, one of our mantras is we create employment. We educate children with the cash we make, right? We live very moderate, moderate lifestyle. So uh, don't chase personal wealth. Be sure the business is making cash every day and generate employment. The rest will take care of itself. So you help other people get what they want you will get what you want at the end of the day. Oh, that's, that's I think that's, that's, that's what we do. And it's the same thing. It's across the board. Uh, I would say, other than my father, I've learned the most by watching, listening to Suresh Krishna, who is now the chairman of uh, yeah. TVS, my uncle, and Venu also, of course. They're both amazing, amazing people. How important are friends? And how do you choose your friends? See, the, even to this day, the best friends I have are the ones I went to school with, right? Boarding school. I mean, you are closer than friends. Yes. Uh, if you've not been to a school like that, boarding school, it's you know, tough to describe, but they are, the, they are the best friends I have. But that's complete, you know, friends, okay? You, we talk trash, we do all kinds of stuff. But you also need friends at work. You know, you need friends you can actually you know, pick up the phone and call. To be honest, my wife is the only one. Oh, wow. Your wife is your only one who I would say is a really good friend of mine. How today. amazing it is to hear this from your mouth. Not just like, I mean, it's, oh, wow, it's like a nail on my head. How many people can tell this? My wife is my best friend. <laughs> I, I know. But when, when, when you say truly best friend, right? I would say wife is my only truly best friend. I have a lot of good friends. A lot of good friends, you know, but really whom i really i would call a best friend is just my wife i, I want the younger generation to understand this uh, the depth this shows the depth uh, of uh, whatever you guys share between you between each other like you and yeah, uh, your wife well i like to think that i'm also the same thing to her so i i <laughs> I, 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 I hope she'll say the same thing right 
pretty much you know you answered i i mean i i wanted to ask you one thing in context with success and balance and yeah you answered that emotional detachment is what you said that's extremely key right is that's you know you need to be you know i even tell my son right now as he's growing up i said you have to your emotional iq is very key as a leader you have to be calm you have to be confident you have to project a can do all the time because people look up to you right so you you it's very critical is you are smart everybody knows that you've gone to the best schools you've gone to you know bcg etc etc but as a leader you have to be inspirational you have to be it's you know you have to uh make sure that they know you are for them that you want them to do well you know these are the traits that you have to really be very clear about can these traits be developed by a person 100%, or is that an anything 100% that's why i feel all younger people need a need a mentor for example i sit down with my son once a week we we hope to do that and i give him every week what are the mistakes i made what are the good things i've done so i hope it'll you know he will take take that up and i also share with him posts whatsapp posts and all that all, all and you pretty much uh, i mean it's unfiltered conversations right yeah, what you absolutely. have with your yeah, totally totally Okay. totally so i hope in you know hope he will share because one of the things i missed most in my life i never had a mentor oh. never because i was alone from 94 onwards and everything i've done by myself oh. so i could have crunched a lot of the experiences and done things a lot better if i had somebody who was older more experienced to mentor me how important is uh, eq people talk about iq but emotional quotient it depends on where you work right if you if you work in a large group if you're a part of the team very important for example i encourage team work i i don't want a ceo who's highly paid and you know cracks the whip i don't like that i encourage team work so for team work you need to be able to work as a team right discuss not argue right discuss so we need we teach that at work also i also teach it at work that's very very key but so a, a a lot depends on and it's your personality if you are the type who likes to be alone who likes to crack the whip hey remove yourself from a team go to <laughs> where you are happy you know go to the r and d department or something like that and that's what we you know we do because some people are inherently want to argue and fight it's my way <laughs> that's fine but they may have some skills they have they might have some skills so you need to be able to you know put them where they can actually add add value what is happiness according to you sir i can give you a philo- philosophical uh, answer or i could give you a real answer i want a real answer first happiness is first of all it is a state of mind you can choose i think you can choose to be happy which starts with self acceptance i think the root cause of many problems in this world is a poor self esteem okay that's the first step if your self esteem is not good you don't accept yourself you will never be happy you can have all the money in the world you can have anything is you're never going to be happy so i would say focus on a self acceptance accept this accept yourself the way you are okay take your strengths build upon that that is the most important thing today you can choose to be happy or sad or think about the past you can do all those kind of stuff but the self esteem is is the driving force it's what drives you to achieve it's what drives you to help people it's what drives everything today your health everything today so that i would say is the number one cause so if you accept yourself the way you are what you've done no regrets at all why should you not be happy why do i care that you have you have 25 million more in the bank hey good for you so what do i say right what is wealth according to you i think like i said material wealth is important you must you need to have a home to live in you need to have a you know the car which you feel you like uh you need to have cash in the bank you need to make sure your kids and spouses and families are all you know looked after well right that is i think is definitely an important part let's not we can't live on love and uh, you know 
<laughs> fresh air. So say, that's, say, that's say an that important again. part. No, I want to hear that again. We can't live on love and fresh air. <laughs> so what are lives? Right? lives? I mean, we have, we have to be, you know, we have to real be about here, it, right? Yeah, we have to be honest. So that that's so you need to have the wealth to do the things that you need, right? But but I think the real, I mean, the real wealth, if you ask me, is understand your skill and spread that skill. I think that is really the wealth is if you ask me that the definite of wealth so if i can create jobs i must create wealth in other people i must improve the standard of living of other people and this and this is exactly what happened in the late 50s when we were when the tvs family was competing for licenses those are the days right people there said if we give you one license you will create a thousand jobs because they knew our philosophy in the 50s was we do not chase personal wealth we create employment and we do so much good around there and that has been the tvs way for 112 years it still is things have not changed you have the most so you have to give the most right i mean that should be right. the whole thing right you have to give the most they should never feel that you are holding back you know that you are keeping it all to you so you have to give the most you have to make sure that they are all you know taken care of and you know all that kind of stuff right so you have to be very very sensitive let me ask you this the tvs family has stayed in one piece for 112 years okay that's phenomenal right Amazing. phenomenal we have separated without rancor nothing even more phenomenal right global people are doing case studies on us what do you think is the single biggest or one of the biggest uh, factors that has helped us stay in one piece probably you were all giving uh, i mean more giving towards each other within the family well when it comes to business we are very hard nosed driven because we have to make money it's more of a personal trait the word no does not exist in our vocabulary can you explain that for me suppose you are my my son and you said dad i want you know i want to build a car that's a cockamamie idea the car i mean let me give you an idea but i would never say no i would say okay let's see you know you know what you have in mind i would work around it i know this is not going to work i know people are but i would work around it i would slowly 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 get you around to doing something which is acceptable to us both but if i say no what happens next you will dig your heels yeah. in at the board level all right shareholders are sitting around we are all here on the board he says no he says no what happens okay next time you come up with something i'll say no no not because it's good or bad i'll because you said no to me i'll say no so if you say no you are dead so in a family the same thing happens you never say no you have to say <laughs> and that's what my dad said use both your ears in through one and out through through the other never say no when your <laughs> wife shouts at you smile and nod your head and she shouts at me a lot right this smile and nod your head that you'll calm down right in through here and out through here so you got to be extremely careful the word no should never exist in a family you find ways around it you have to be patient the partition that we did right now took us 6 years why 100% of the shareholders signed in we got a ram we, 90% said yes in 3 three, 3 three months but you waited for 6 years why wow because we wanted to get everybody on board that's our style oh, this patience is, this is amazing this is patience we are patients we talk to people slowly 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 make sure that they are you know it's it's fair both ways that's how we work uh, i was told that you started coaching uh, families for family businesses mm. uh, not just families for family businesses you started coaching young entrepreneurs you coach a lot no, of people two two aspects to it one is a business family right how the family should manage itself because if the family doesn't stay in one piece the businesses will fall apart why because from the age of 10 years old 1968 i've the first fights or let us say disagreements 
erupted in our own family, which I've seen. Right. Until the partition that we had three months ago. So I've seen the whole spectrum of it. I have massive experience in that. Wow. In what to do and what not to do. So you manage the family well. The second part of it is as a mentor to younger people and younger CEOs. So I focus on smaller, say 250 crore and less. Okay. And old school. I don't do IT because yeah. I don't know, know that stuff. Right. Brick and mortar type, right? Manufacturing. Those kind of, those kind of uh, CEOs I work with and help out. And looking at you, like, uh, I'm amazed, like, uh, you know, you're, 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 you're very agile as a, as a human being, physically at least. Pure luck. <laughs> <laughs> now you work on yourself. Don't, of course I do. Don't give me that. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so you've been working on that for almost like, 40 years now, isn't it, sir? It never stopped, right? Never stopped. Never stopped. Yeah, that's that's something which I would I would I would want people to take it from you. Look, Chennai is the diabetes capital of the world. Why? Diet, right? So, so that just narrows down to food. Uh, yeah. 80 percent or maybe 90 percent of illnesses is due to what? Food, food. It's just directly obesity and food. That's food. it, right? And that's that is a that's the whole thing. So I hope your shows will also focus on. You know, yeah, those, a lot, lot about those that. things. Yeah, I mean, that's the root cause. And the worst thing is, uh, sir. I mean, uh, when people, I'm sure people who follow me know that even your mental health is directly uh, of course, uh, linked definitely to the food stress, work-life balance, your stress, inability to handle stress, all that matters. Of course, it does. But but diet is rotten, no, no. absolutely rotten. It's basically if you want to drive a petrol car. You have to pour petrol into the car, not kerosene, and, and think that car's gonna go. Uh, no, go. F I mean, go it's fast. absolutely rotten. For example, I can go on a four-hour bike ride, four-hour bike ride, with no no food, fueled by fat, comfortably, because my metabolic flexibility is so high. But that's been trained. Most people can't even do thirty minutes. They can't. They can't. No, not and uh, forget. Uh, they want carbs immediately. They want carbs, <laughs> carbs, right? I mean, that's how it they is. Want right? carbs. So, but that's a that's a sad part and a fact. Then what's your what's your protein source like? Where do you get your protein from? Most I eat very little meat these days, but I try to take in about 0. 0.6 grams per pound. So I'm about 80 kgs now, about 12 to 13 percent body fat, which I which, which I check. So which means uh, about uh, 0. 0. 0.6 grams per pound. So about 100 grams, 110 grams at least is fair enough. And it mostly comes from fish. Um, little meats. I have Even about four eggs a day, full full eggs a day. Uh, protein powder, a couple of spoons. You take vegan protein powder? Vegan, right, protein powder. Dairy I love, though it's not technically the best, but I have a little bit of cheese uh, and all that. Uh, fundamentally, that's it. I try to get in a piece of meat at least three, four days a week. But 100 grams I'm able to squeeze in. Squeeze in. Oh, that's... And that's pretty good. My diet is basically paleo, which is uh, cereals, grains, alcohol, vegetable oils is very, very low, very, very low. Vegetable oils is yeah. a void. Oh, it a causes plate, a lot of right? I, I don't even touch that. Uh, cereals and grains, very, very little. So vegetables would be 80% of my diet. Oh, that's just the way grilled be. vegetables would be 80 percent of. My and what's your breakfast like? Nothing. I don't eat breakfast. You're, okay, you're an I. I eat breakfast at all. My first meal is lunch, about half past one. So what do you have for lunch? Uh, same every day. Vegetables is the core. Right? That that's the core, with eggs or meat, some nuts, a lot of fat. Same thing every day. So that's it. There's no change. I'm the most boring person in terms of diet. My wife and kids say that I'm crazy, <laughs> but the discipline I have is quite high. Yeah. And how important is discipline in life? Very important. Right? <laughs> but it's just it's it's tough. Yeah. I mean, that's look it, around that's, you. That's why I'm asking you that question. <laughs> look, look around you. Ninety. There's how many people for, for a man over twenty percent body fat is obese. Exactly. Okay, under 15 or 15 is healthy. How many men over 35 in the street do you think are under 20%? One, two, two percent? Maybe, maybe. Maybe two percent. Maybe. Then? It's a very scary number. Yeah. That's why we are the diabetes capital of the world. And we women is 
maybe 5% more. With, they're a lot better. They're a lot better. Women are a lot better. a lot better. They look after themselves. They work out a lot more. They pay attention to how they look. Men are just sloppy. sloppy. Not just diabetes, you know. We are we're actually Everything. becoming... Uh, Everything. The cancer capital of the world. Your like knees that. also, the, if, if you are 40 pounds <laughs> heavier, <laughs> knees are going to give way, right? You, you know that Absolutely. also. So every single thing in the root cause is obesity, which is diet and poor, poor lifestyles. Poor lifestyle. Beautiful. I think you're a living example of... Uh, Try to be. Of you know. many things, like not just... Uh, I mean, like, this is amazing to... So we need to set up a session of the gym. Sure. Thank you for inviting me here. And uh, just send me a copy of this please I would I would love to see it and uh, please be sure that you I mean I mean that we have a clear date the next one will be in the gym but <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for coming sir and uh, I learned a lot from him today and I'm sure you guys did too and uh, thanks for watching